Hi, I'm Wendy with H2OBungalow.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a DIY wood countertop. You can download my instructions and supply list on my blog at H2OBungalow.com. Search wood countertop. There's also a link to my post in this video description too. Wood countertops come in several different types of hardwood in various pre-cut lengths and are all standard at one and a half inches thick and 25 inches wide. You can find them in your local big box store. They all come unfinished and they will darken a bit once you've added a sealer. This is a list of the supplies I used for my wood counters. Again, you can get this list from my blog post. And you only need a few basic tools to create your own wood countertops. Alrighty then, so let's get started. You'll start by preparing the cabinet bases for the new countertop. Secure the counter bases to the wall and if needed, add additional wall braces. You'll see we don't have corner units that went all the way to the wall, so we had to add extra support for the countertop to rest on. Prep other areas like bar tops as needed. Use a circular saw to cut the wood countertop to size. Think about where you're okay with seams in advance. We kept factory cut seams next to each other and our cuts were the ones on the outside next to the appliances. And then sanded all of the sharp edges to add a micro bevel. Connect joining pieces by adding pocket holes in groups of two about a foot apart to the underside of the counter by laying it on a flat surface. We used cardboard on the floor to protect the countertop and the floor underneath. The Craig 320 worked really well with a single person holding it in place and we didn't need to use clamps. Make sure the two pieces come together flat and attach with two inch pocket screws. Dry fit all of the pieces and then cut your sink opening. I didn't get this on video, but most sinks come with a template you can trace onto the surface and cut out. Check to be sure two separate pieces of countertops are level when they butt up together. Shim where needed to make them flush. Use clear silicone adhesive to seal where the wood countertop will sit on the bases. Use wood screws from inside the cabinets to attach the countertop to the cabinet base frame where needed. Use liquid nails or clear silicone and a few brad nails to hold the backsplashes in place. Once the countertop is in place, you'll sand everything with a high grit sandpaper along the grain of the wood. Wipe all the dust off with painter's rags followed by a tack cloth. Note that I didn't install the backsplash behind the sink yet. I wanted to use sealer to cover the entire countertop and all the way around the backsplash, especially behind the sink, before installing it. Add painter's tape to protect the walls, cabinets, and anything else around the wood countertops from the finish getting onto it. It's not easy to get off. Because we've butted the factory edges together, the two slightly beveled edges are side by side. So to prevent food or water from getting into those spaces, we sealed them with a two-part epoxy. First, I ran a layer of painter's tape along the edges of both beveled sides, and I was sure to get the front and seal the bottom of the countertop well. Next, I mixed a two-part epoxy and I filled the bevel in. Be sure to take the tape off before it dries and allow it to finish hardening. Next, you'll lightly sand with a sanding block until the top is smooth and flush. Wipe all the dust off with the tack cloth. Now you're ready to finish the countertop. You can find more tips about using water locks in my blog post. Run a tack cloth over everything one more time before sealing. You'll add three coats of waterlock sealer, allowing it to dry and sanding it lightly in between each coat. Wear protective goggles and a face mask when you're using waterlocks. Open the windows and ventilate the room very well if possible. The smell is really strong. Don't shake the can. Work with small amounts at a time by pouring the waterlocks into a separate container. 
Always seal the can right away using Bloxygen to remove the air in the can, otherwise your finish will start hardening in the can even with the lid closed. Apply the finish with a foam brush using long strokes. Cover all the odd surfaces first before moving on to the countertop. Apply in long sweeping motions from the high points to the low spots and always with the green. Be sure to get this edges and the sink cut out thoroughly. Allow it to dry 24 hours. Before adding your next coat, you'll sand very lightly with a 220 grit sanding block, go over everything once more with a tack cloth, and then add another coat of water locks. Allow the second coat to dry, wait 24 hours before adding your third coat, and give your water lock sealer one more coat onto the countertops. Water locks will need 30 to 45 days to fully cure to its hardest state. You can use it before then, but the maximum hardness comes with full curing. Once fully dry, we attach the rest of the wood backsplash. If you're wondering how well our wood countertop has held up, it's been in place and used pretty much every day for about a year and a half now, and we still love it. We haven't had to add another coat of finish yet. When the time comes, we'll clean it and degrease it well, sand the top lightly, tape off the areas, and simply put on another coat of water locks right over the old one. Again, you can find the complete set of instructions and the supplies I used in my blog post at h2obungalow.com. If you like this and my project, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And while you're on my blog, don't forget to subscribe to that too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next creative DIY project from H2O Bungalow.